Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today, if you read the title for this video, I am reviewing The Kingdom of the Cursed by Kerry Maniscalco, which is being released on the 5th of October, so just in a few days. I got an early copy because I could and I did it just so I could post a review before the release date. That is commitment, just saying. Kingdom of the Cursed is the sequel to Kingdom of the Wicked that came out last year. Kingdom of the Wicked is a trilogy and it is a YA fantasy and the first book is set in Italy, I believe, and it follows these two sisters, Emilia and Victoria. Victoria goes missing and Emilia then later finds her body and then she meets one of the princess of hell. There is is seven of them, isn't it that right? She meets the Prince of Hell called, is it Wrath? Wrath. I don't know why I was about to say Wraith, that was the thing, that's why I had to check. And they go together to investigate what happened to Emilia's sister. She's also a witch and there's this whole like very nice atmosphere with the setting and everything. Nice food and stuff. I don't know what I'm saying. So yeah, that was the first book. We went through this whole thing and I will be honest with you, I did not really like particularly like the first book. It had so much potential, so much good stuff, but I think the book itself was a mess. And now you might ask me, why did I then read the second book? Well, there's several reasons. One, I would have read it anyway, because I always read the sequels to books. I always complete the series as eventually. And I had hopes that it would be better than what this was. I will put it down now because we're done talking about the first book. And did the hopes that I had, did the hopes live? They actually died, but let's talk about why. So I don't really know how to talk about this without spoiling the first book because it starts off at the point and then, you know, it's after the first book. So if you are here and you haven't read the first book, I will say a bit about the synopsis in this one just because or else I don't have any starting point. If you watch so far in this video and you just press it and you're like, I don't, you know what I'm talking about, you do not want to know anything about this, you haven't read the first book, then you should leave because yeah, I won't spoil any details in this, I like reveal some stuff of course, maybe not until the end we will have a little spoiler section because I need to scream about some stuff. But like, I won't spoil the second book, but I will spoil the first one. So you can leave, but you can also stay if you don't care. So basically, the second book here starts exactly where the first book left off and we are literally in hell. She then grows through hell with Wrath who brings her to his house and she needs to deal with the new, I was gonna say, intricates of court there in hell and needs to find out like how to survive there or be smart there. And she's still there of course, as we know, to find out what really happened to her sister. Which of the princes of hell was the cause of her sister's death? Will we ever find out? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> like, I don't know how to describe this, but it was really nice hair. <laughs> but the first rule in the court of the wicked, trust no one, and it quickly becomes clear that nothing in hell is what it seems. I don't even know what to say. Like, I don't know what to say. What to say, what to say. You would think going to hell and being with one of the princes of hell that was hell in one sentence twice. It would be like cool and dark and scary, but I don't feel the stakes in this book. I think that was the problem also with the first book. Cause it's supposed to be, they're the princes of hell. They're not supposed to be good guys. They're supposed to be bad guys. And the author has this line where you have a prince and he can't be good because he's the prince of hell, but he also cannot be completely the other asshole because then people wouldn't, you know, ship the romance. And there's this line where the author tries to walk on and I don't think, like, I am not convinced that Wrath is the prince of hell. I am not convinced that he is, the cause of wars and destruction. I just think he's dude that has like <laughs> some abilities. I don't even know. I don't feel the threat of hell. And that's, it's sad. I think that the atmosphere here could have been done differently and it would have been like spooky and dark and like really enticing. But it's like just as if they were anywhere that is a bit dangerous and I'm like, 
oh, okay. <laughs> like, I, I, I feel like it should have been more of a distinct difference between the first book and the second book. Like, yes, they say it's dangerous, but it's also like, they're just in the house all the time. So it doesn't really matter where they are. <laughs> I'm sorry. Also the plot. I was gonna say which plot, because I feel like there is this, you know, the whole reason she's there is to find out what happened to her sister. And she does do things to make this happen, but there's like no, no conclusions, nothing that opens up, nothing that like gives, gives the reader anything, I think. I think like there's these small parts and then she uses one and a half page to describe, oh, this means this and this means this, but does it mean anything? I feel like it's so meaningless. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but there's these small details, like let's say there's this spell book and that spell book can help her with things. But I feel like that is just a sidetrack to what actually matters, which is the romance. And here's the thing, I don't mind the romance. I think they are nice together and they can be happy and everything. <laughs> but it's also like, everything is on the side for that. The plot doesn't feel important. I don't even like, I don't know how to care about things being revealed because the book is not making me care about them. I have a lot of, I a whole lot of issues here, but I feel like the story just wasn't, uh, what's it called? Consistent or like a, a good structured story for me, which is like what this review is. It feels like this review just in a book form. And I just feel like there's so many elements that are so cool. Like we have Amelia who's a witch, and th those powers are just used when it's very convenient to move the plot forward. We have the princess of hell. It should be cool and dark and scary and horrible I, in a sense too. But they're just there to be sexy hand boys and they like don't feel like princess of hell. And we have, we are in hell, I don't know what to tell you, but it doesn't give what is promised, which was exactly what I felt in the first book. It just doesn't go over that line. It keeps hair when it should be explored and open. I don't know how to describe it. And yeah, the plot, it's very boring because it doesn't feel like a plot. It just feels like, oh, I'm going to my room and I'm going to sleep and I wake up and I might, like ask people some questions today and then you go to your room and you eat a bit and then there is sexy times let's talk about the sexy times because the book is much more sexier than i thought it would be for a ya book i think i don't mind that at all i think it's very important to have healthy representations of sex in younger books showing that there's nothing to be ashamed of to feel horny because everyone does that or not everyone but a lot of the population on this planet do feel those feelings. Nothing to be ashamed of. Do you go and get that release? Whatever. But it was very teasy and I did enjoy that. There's like the most interesting parts was the smut. So maybe I should find a smut book. No, I'm joking. Either way, sidetracking a lot here. I thought those scenes were really funny, but the book was trying to like balance having sexy scenes and like, what's it called, like romantic moments. And then balancing like this plot that was not really a plot, it was just going around and maybe trying to do something productive. And I feel like it should either just go all in with the romance, just forget about the plot, or go all in with the plot and then still have sexy scenes. I don't know how to describe it because everything was to develop their relationship and I feel like everything else was sidetracked and just there to be like, oh, it's actually a story here, but is it? It is. A Y romance. I, again, I do not mind it, but it has all these cool concepts that I wish was more explored and that also we could have the romance. So maybe, I don't know, maybe like the book, oh god, that was a really loud notification. So maybe the book needed to either be maybe like longer or written differently in a way that we could get this romance that is now written entertainingly, I would say, and then also get like all the nice parts of the world and the plot. Oh, again, which plot? But the book bases itself on the conclusion of the book. The 100 last pages is where we're like, that's how the reveal's hair, where you would be surprised, where we would feel like this book meant something. We got one important reveal 200 pages in, and then like two more in the end. And I want to talk about those in the spoiler section, because especially one of them is what drives the story forward, the one we get on like 200 pages. And it's just so hilarious. But just like, it reminds me where, again, it doesn't want to go over that line to be another book than what it is categorized as. And I almost wish that it did. Like it did go over those lines, but also then it wouldn't be this book. I don't know, I don't know. What is this review? I do not know. Point is that, all the elements here 
was just not it for me. I think the atmosphere of the book, how it is described as sounds awesome, but the execution is just not it for me. This is not the kind of execution I would want of this kind of story. But I can see other people enjoy it and I can see that if you enjoy the first book you will really like this one. And yes, I will now have to read the third book because I need to know, I guess, how it's gonna end up. But what I can say is that I do I think enjoy Amelia as a character. I do like how driven she is and how she stands up for herself. And also the banter between Rath and Amelia can be sometimes very funny. There's just some comments they give to each other that's funny, but there's also like they always banter. So I think that it becomes a bit much sometimes, but when they give good lines, it's good. Sometimes I'm always like, I don't need you to know that you want to kill him every sentence. So there's like a mix of it. It's too much, but it's also hilarious at times. Maybe they would have been a better as like a really like sexy, sexy book, like a proper sexy book, or it would have been better as like a really high fantasy book where it could go into all the different dynamics in the story that is not really felt throughout it. Or it could just be as it is. I don't even know. I ended up giving it I guess 2 out of 5 stars, maybe 2.5, because there's parts that are very entertaining, but I don't feel like I like the story. And for me, plot is really important to have it consistent, to have it make sense, to have that feeling like, oh, this was all worth something. And there's like a complete opposite feeling in this one, where again, it's just some reveals that is like, this is it, and you're supposed to be shocked. And it was not it for me. But yay, I'm gonna have like a tiny little spoiler section here, but to scream about some things, I assume like this book is not released yet, so I don't know who actually will watch that part, but I want it there anyway. If you don't care about the series, I think watching that part could be fun for you, just because there's just three parts that I need to talk about because they're kind of stupid. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this so far, leave a skull emoji down below if you enjoyed. And I will go right into some small spoilers, like three specifically I want to talk about and then this will be over. <laughs> so the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that it was not the marriage contract with Pride that she was in for. It was a marriage contract with Rath the whole time. And to complete this marriage contract, they have to have sex. And then they have to like sign something or like a ceremony or something and then they will be married. And then they will be bonded forever. And like, can we talk about the fact that like, the sexy scenes <laughs> were fun, but they were also close to fucking, but they were like, no, I don't want to get married. And then the book ends with Amelia being like, okay, I want you forever, which I, I admire that choice. She knows what she wants. But then the book ends and we don't actually get the sex scene. <laughs> I was like, if this was a different book, I don't know. Either way, I'm gonna try not to be a pervert for a moment and just talk about the fact that that was like the driving point through the story being that if they had sex, they would get married. And I don't know, those kinds of plots where it's like a reason for them to just not bang. I find them so hilarious. There was this other book I read and it was like, if they had sex, they won't of the characters would die and they were so horny and <laughs> it was just hilarious and then we can also talk about the fact that what is really sex you can please each other without you know putting the thing inside but the act of sex if this was not a straight story how would you then determine how they had sex that's what I want to know. Either way, that was hilarious. That was the driving point through the story. I had, that was, that was when they, I laughed out loud. It was so, I don't know if it was great or funny. It was like a mix of both. The second thing I want to talk about is a rat is really the devil. Pride, being pride, prevents him for admitting that, that, that he is not the devil because it would be shameful since he's been lying about it, but it's really wrath. And now I'm like, when was this like a thing? Like why it doesn't feel why is he the devil what um okay, they want that because it will be excited to the story and be like, oh my god, he was really the devil all along. But it just feels not deserved. It was just out of nowhere it was like, oh, that's who he really is. And I was like, this is not as exciting as I thought, oh as maybe you thought it would be. But she doesn't care. I do admire that again, Amelia. You go and get that whatever you can get. And then in the end, we see the sister being alive. <laughs> and I expected this. I did not expect her to be dead ever. She seemed like a bitch that would trick everyone that loved her and be alive because she seemed really selfish being alive. Then like everything that we have been doing the last two books, you can find out this sooner. And Rat knew the whole time she was alive. So she just let Amelia go around 
and trying to find these clues or whatever she has been doing and just didn't want to mention this to her. I guess we will find out like some kind of reason why, but this is just hilarious to me. Very typical way to, I don't know, reveal things. And it was just, I don't, I don't know. Those things, I don't know if they made the whole thing worse or better, to be honest. Okay, I'm ending this video now. Thank you if you watched the spoiler section because it is, I don't have words, apparently. Okay, I will end this video now. This review was whatever. And you will see me soon. Goodbye! <laughs>